Before we get into this video, I just wanted to mention that uh, I'm going to put chapters in the description of this video. So if you scroll down and you want to see a certain part of this, uh, you can just click on that link of the chapter right there and it'll take you right to it in the video. Um, this video is kind of lengthy. I talk a little bit and tend to explain stuff a lot. And uh, so if you if you just want the meat and potatoes, you know, and you don't you don't want the whole spill and the walkthrough and all that stuff, you know, you can go down, look at the description, and, and go to the chapters. Anyway, uh, here we go. ordered a thread repair kit from hunsolutions.com and uh, this is going to be a video on how to install the NS300L. I'm pretty sure I got that right. So I'm going to throw up a picture right now and show you a picture of the actual kit. And uh, But you can go online, contact them uh, to purchase this and uh, you can also find it on eBay and probably a couple other places but probably best to go straight to the source. Um, so one of the reasons that I picked this kit, aside from its amazing reviews, is that uh, you know it don't take a whole lot of common sense to figure out that these coarse threads that are on this thread insert are going to grab an aluminum a lot better than some fine threads. So right off the rip, just seeing you know a comparison photo of this next to a helicoil and or helicoil, however you pronounce it, and some uh, some other ones. These are. Uh, to me, obviously, the best choice just because of the coarse threads. So I went ahead and ordered the kit. And it's a little bit pricey, but um, you know, this is gonna be a heck of a lot cheaper than taking your engine to a machine shop, you know, and having having it done because it's very pricey. So um, basically, what I'm gonna do is walk you through, um, you know, redrilling a hole. I'll probably do two. I'll do one shallow hole and one deep hole, and. Uh, I mean, if you know anything about Gen 3 engines, you know you've got 10 head bolts, the large bolts on each side. And uh, all but two of them are deep holes and then two are shallow. And uh, so basically the two shallow holes are going to be more like, you know, a Gen 4 engine. So this demonstration will be helpful for either one. So uh, that's why I'm going to do one of each. But uh, I wanted to show you guys a couple of things. First, the insert. You know, so we've got a uh, 5 8 by 18 coarse thread on the outside. The inside is your standard M11 2.0 head bolt, LS head bolt. And I've got some ARP bolts here. Um, so there's there's your basic information about the insert itself. And it's made out of steel and it's very, very nicely machined. I mean, there's no rough edges, nothing. I mean, this thing is gorgeous. And uh, before you go any further, I will mention, I am not at all affiliated or sponsored by Hun Performance or HunSolutions.com and uh, you know this may not be exactly how they want this done I'm just going to show you how I've been doing it this is my interpretation of the instructions and uh, it's working for me fine and so this is just kind of like a mix of my experience of doing machine work and, and other stuff and their instructions so um, you know hopefully this will help you out uh, you're going to need a few things that don't come in the kit. I highly recommend getting a bottle brush. Um, this is probably, I don't know, like a 3 8 bottle brush, something like that. Um, it's going to fit in the hole. I mean, it might be a half inch one or something. I'm really not sure, but uh, you can kind of tell how big it is. So you're going to want that. You're going to need some carburetor cleaner or something like that. I've got some acetone in a squirt bottle, you know, so... That's going to be, after we're done, we're going to clean the threads using the brush and this. Um, it comes with the Loctite, the um, tap cutting oil, and uh, all your drill bits and everything. And depending on which kit you buy, they've got two different kits for LS engines. Um, the Gen 4 kit is a good bit cheaper than the Gen 3 kit because the Gen 3's got these deeper holes, so it comes with an extra tap. And um, so that's, that's costly. And this guy's, you know, that's a pretty good size tap, so, um, you know, I'm sure that's expensive. I haven't looked at this one part, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's definitely a nice, nice item. None of these tools are cheap. Um, you know, everything's 
really, really nice. So I've already actually done six holes on this side. And uh, I figured I'd go ahead because when I get done with this side, I want to go ahead and torque, you know, clean everything up, torque the, uh, the head down, get this side done. And then even though I don't have any strict head bolts on the other side, um, I'm just going to go ahead and do, do all the big bolts. That way I don't have to worry about it. Um, as far as I know, I only had one stripped out on this side, but you know, if one strips, who knows if the other ones are going to strip. So and with this being a boosted engine, I want to make sure it's solid. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and film the last, you know, a couple holes on this side so that you guys can see what's going on. Um, so first what we're going to do, let me see if I get this camera positioned. Hopefully that's, that's good. Um, You've got this jig right here, and you're going to take one of your head bolts, and, uh, you know, depending on whether you're Gen 4 or Gen 3, there's a couple of different spaces in here, but this is your positioning bracket. You've got two different bushings that'll go in there, and uh, so we're going to start with the smallest bushing, which is this one right here, and it's actually marked with a 17 30 seconds. So you'll put that in there, kind of tighten the thumb screw down a little bit, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and thread this head bolt down here. And then we've got a dowel that comes with the kit, and this is to center up your spacer. So there's my next head bolt, and this is one of the shallow ones right here. So uh, I want to poke through the tape, and also you probably want to tape your engine up, uh, you know, just to try to keep shavings from getting down in your water jackets mostly, because everything else you can you can clean pretty easily, but the water jackets are going to be a little more difficult. So I would just go ahead and put you a good layer of tape on here, and uh, you know that way you don't have to worry about that. So we're going to take this little dowel and we're going to push it into the hole and it's going to center everything up. And we're going to take a wrench. Which these ARPs are 13 and stock head bolts I believe are 15. Uh, but you're going to just center that up. You know, get it tightened down. And you don't want it super tight but you know it don't need to move either. So that's where we're at on that. But, um, you know, you can see it's solid, so now the hole's centered. And uh, this is where we're going to start with the drill. And uh, one thing that's cool about this drill bit that I've noticed, and uh, I said in the instructions too, but I figured I'd point it out. They've got the nose of this drill bit ground to a certain angle to where it's pretty much just going to cut the threads out of the hole. Like, it's just going to go down through the hole and, and narrow it out, but it won't cut. Like, once you get to the bottom of the hole, it stops. And uh, so that's... It's very obvious when you get to the bottom, and you'll see that here in a second. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and start drilling this hole. And with this being a shallow hole, I should be able to go ahead and get this in one shot. And then uh, we'll move on to tapping it. So uh, I'm going to add just a little bit of oil to the drill bit. It just helps it cut a little bit better. And run the drill on low speed. It's a pretty large drill bit, so you want to you know, just run it nice and slow. Don't let it bind up on you or anything. We'll just drill this thing out. Alright, now I'm sure you can hear that, and you saw that once I got to the bottom of the hole, it just, you know, the drill motor just leveled out. Like, you can tell it's not pulling anymore. And uh, I'm, I'm pushing down on it, and it's not doing anything else. So, um, that was very good of them to do that. It just makes things a little bit simpler. But, uh, I'm going to go ahead, brush my drill bit off. You're going to want another brush. You know, just try to keep everything brushed off, clean your drill bit and uh, as we're tapping we're going to clean the flutes and everything off too so I'll show you that though but uh anyway we're going to slide this guy off and then we're going to clean this up and uh so the next thing you're going to probably need is some compressed air I'm sure there might be some other ways that you can do this um but you need to get compressed air down into the bottom of the hole uh, so you can blow the chips out so and then the other thing that's going to help you a lot that you don't necessarily have to have, but it sure does help, is a shot back. So I'm going to show you how to uh, clean the hole out real quick, and then we'll get on to tapping it. I 
don't even know when it stopped. All right, now that we got our hole cleaned out, um, what we're gonna do is grab our large bushing, and we're gonna slide this in here. And uh, we've still got this thing centered up, but if you were working on one of the deep holes, in order to drill it all the way out, you're gonna have to move this to get that drill bit all the way down. Um, so at that point, you know, this dowel pin will actually slide all the way down in the hole into the smaller, the smaller dowel. So you can put your smaller dowel pin back in there, or bushing, slide this back in, line it up, tighten it down, and then put your large bushing in there. Um, but it should be pretty obvious when you're doing this. So we're going to come in with our tap, our rounded tap, and we're going to sit it down on the, the block surface there, add a few drops of oil, probably about 10 drops. And uh, you really want to generally use a, a tap handle. Um, I don't really have one. one. My main one's broken, and um, I usually use a, a socket. So this is going to be at a, a 7 16 12 point or an 11 millimeter 12 point. And, uh, you know, this is uh, this is kind of, it's not really tricky, but my point is, is you want to make sure that you don't side load the tap. Um, it's not going to be that critical on this aluminum because it's a softer metal, so it's easier to work with. Um, but we're just going to start tapping this thing down in here, and it's not very difficult at all. But this this jig will keep it straight, and uh, so you'll just you'll just go ahead and work it in. And uh, you want to put counter pressure up against the head while you're turning. And uh, and just to make sure that you keep even pressure, you can also you know go up like count maybe 10, 10 times you pull down on the handle and go ten times back up. Um, since the aluminum is soft, you know it might it might uh, want to guide the tap in one direction or another. So. Um, it doesn't hurt, you know, just to alternate what side you put the pressure on. Um, as a matter of fact, pushing up on the handle is going to make it easier to get even pressure because you can pull down on this easier, and it's a little bit harder to push up on this than to pull it down, so you'll get a little bit better even pressure on it. But uh, we're going to basically run this down, and uh, it's, it's hard for me to explain, but as you're doing this, you'll be able to kind of feel, you know, when the flutes get full. And so, we're just going to run this guy down, basically, until you feel the flute fill up. And then once you kind of feel the flutes fill up, you're going to back it out. It's got a little bit of a bind to it whenever you start to back it out, but it'll, it'll loosen right up. And uh, just to save time. I've got another 11, this 11 millimeter 12 point, just to, just to back it in and out of the hole. And uh, first thing you're going to do is go ahead and brush this thing off. Make sure it's clean, you know, because when you go back in the hole, you want you want it fresh. And I'll set that to the side. And then we're going to vacuum out the hole again, clean all the chips out of it. So I'll do that right quick. Now that we've got our tap started, we don't really need the guide anymore. So I'll go ahead and move this guy out of the way. And uh, I guess the next hole I'll do is the top. And that's another thing too, you know, to try to minimize, um, you know, having to clean the holes out and all that kind of stuff. You can kind of start at the top and work your way down. I started with this hole and then I put the, the tooling in this hole and did that one and that one without even unthreading this and this one. And then now I'm, I just did that one off of that hole. I wanna do this one off of this hole and then I'll do the, the lower one off of that hole and the lower one off of that hole. So I hope that makes sense. But uh, we're gonna see on the shallow hole, we're gonna see if we can finish this up with this short tap on this Gen 3 block. We'll find out. But uh. I'll run this back down to where I was, 
add some more oil and then we'll start cutting by hand again and I know the the impact sounds loud but it's actually not a lot of force on there so um, even though it sounds like I'm you know getting on it hard or something like that it's really not hardly any force at all if I was using a drill you know it wouldn't, it wouldn't be anything but um, you know I don't want to change all, change stuff out a lot so I'm just using some different tools so I don't have to change the tips anyway we're going to run this thing down go ahead and cut some more of this hole and we'll see how far we get on this tab I think it's going to make it all the way down Flutes are full, so I'm going to back it out again. Blow the hole out and repeat it again. I just bottomed out, which is only like two more turns. So I guess I could have went ahead and finished that one up. But what I'm actually gonna do on this one is run this flat bottom tap in here now. And let's see how that does. It's supposed to just get us a few more threads down at the bottom of the hole. So we're going to fill it out see how it, it feels like it's doing good. It's cutting, cutting some more so it's definitely making a difference. And you'll be able to tell for sure when it bottoms out because and you, you don't want to force it any more than that. It doesn't need to be tight at all but you can feel it bottom out in the hole. And so now we're going to back it out. And we're gonna blow the hole out. There's not gonna be much in there, so you don't really need the vacuum. The vacuum is just basically to try to keep from making as much of a mess. So we're going to take some acetone or carburetor cleaner or whatever you have. This going to be good for getting the oil out of the hole. And we'll take this brush. And I'm just going to squirt some of that in there, you know, just work it in there, look at it, scrub it around, get the hole nice and clean. Again, the main purpose of this is to get all the oil out of the hole. And if you get all the oil out of the hole, then you can get all the chips out of the hole. Because we want super clean threads at this point. So, what we're going to do, blow out the acetone or cleaner. Now, I just cleaned the flutes on the on the tip. Uh, no, I didn't. All right, so you want to clean your flutes again. Make sure it's nice and clean. And we're gonna run this down through here again. Now that we sprayed the hole out and cleaned it, we're gonna make sure that these threads are super smooth. So we're just gonna run this thing down. Again, you'll fill it bottom out, back and forth a couple times. Alright, and then, just for extra measure, I'm going to clean this hole out one more time. 
for two reasons. One, we need smooth threads. We need the hole super clean. And we've got to put Loctite on the insert, so we want it to be able to actually bond to the threads. So on this shallow bolt hole, um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to put some Loctite on here. And it's going to not go all the way to the bottom, so... You can just kind of work some Loctite in there. And uh, the kit came with a little measuring device here. And they basically want it to be 17 millimeter down from the uh, deck surface. And so on this thing right here, we've got millimeters. And you can see 10, 20 right there. So we're going to come back three. And uh, that's where we're going to put this thing at. And then once the Loctite sets, so it only takes a few minutes it will keep it right there so run this thing down alright let's see where that puts us right there Let's see, 1918. Just a tad bit more. All right. So this 17 millimeter below the deck surface to the top of the insert. And, uh, you know, since these bolts are shorter, I guess what they're trying to do is, you know, center that thing up on the threads of the bolt. So, uh, anyway, so now that we got that done, we're going to move on to the bottom hole, which I already filmed on the other side, but I lost the audio on this side, so I had to redo that short hole. So, okie dokie. Now we're going to move down to this bottom hole right here. That's, this is a deep hole, so I'll be able to show you guys. How to, how to work this deep hole. So I'll probably time lapse some of this right quick, so stand by. So we got this guy ready to go. We'll put the small sleeve in here, like we did the other one. And we're gonna center this guy up with the hole down there. Tighten her down pretty good. Make sure nothing binds up. If it feels like it's a little bound up, you know, loosen it back up. And uh, try it again. For some reason, this one's wanting to bind up. There we go, I got it that time. All right, I'm gonna leave my small basin in there. I'm gonna go ahead and drill this hole out. And uh, I'm gonna time lapse this too, so that way you guys don't have to sit here and wait. But I just wanted to show you both holes that way, you know, there wasn't any questions. One other thing I'll mention on the uh, the deep holes, when you go in with the short tap for the first cut, um, you can pretty much just bottom it out. 
in the first shot just because the hole's so deep, all the chips can fall down in there. So um, I haven't felt the flutes clog up or anything on, on any of the deep holes. But um, you can pretty much just go ahead and take this thing down as low as you can go on the first cut. And then we'll vacuum the, and blow the hole out and everything. And then we'll go in with the deep one. So as you can see, we're pretty much there. I'll go ahead and back this thing out. And now we don't need the jig anymore at all on this hole. So I'll go ahead and remove it. Get it out of the way because on the deep holes you're going to need all the space you can get. I always start this thing by hand once you've already cut some threads. Make sure you get in the same threads again. Turn it several times by hand. Then we're going to add some more oil. And we're going to go about halfway down and uh, come back out clean the hole and then we're going to go ahead and bottom the the tap out and then get the hole cleaned up and uh, then we'll go ahead and do the insert completely tapped, cleaned, uh, ran the tap up and down obviously, cleaned the threads out, made sure everything was nice and smooth, cleaned them again, blew it out. So now we're going to go with our Loctite and uh, like I said, you just want to basically try to get the bottom inch, inch and a half of uh, the threads down there and uh, it doesn't really matter if you get them on the other threads, you know, so you don't have to like pretend like you're doing surgery or something, you know, just you just want to make sure that there's some down in the bottom. That's basically what we're doing here. So I'm just going to run that around in there. Make sure it was solid. And I'm going to go ahead and put my peepers down there and make sure that everything looks good and it does. So, I'm going to go ahead and check the insert. Make sure there's nothing in the threads. Make sure everything's nice and clean inside and out. And then we're just going to go ahead, slide this guy down in the hole, and send her, send her on down, you know. We're just going to go ahead and send it. And on these deep holes, it's going to be pretty obvious when you reach the bottom. Um, sometimes the threads get a little tight, somewhere around two-thirds of the way down. Not super tight, just enough that it might fool you into thinking that it's all the way down. But um, you'll see by my, I hope this camera's running. You'll see where this thing stops. So it kind of wanted to catch a little bit right there. But um, you know, you kind of tell when it bottoms out. But it's going to be about that deep down inside the hole. Let me turn it a little bit so you can see on the deep Gen 3 holes. So uh, let me try to get this thing there. It is. Make sure it's all the way bottomed out. And of course, you always just want to go ahead and look. Make sure it's bottomed out. And, uh... It actually kind of looks like it's not. Come on. It's 
So if it doesn't want to go all the way down, you know, back it up a little bit and kind of try it again. And it's it's definitely down there. Um, one thing you'll notice when you're looking, if you're working on a Gen 3 block, um, it's not going to go dead down to the bottom because we don't have a long enough uh, that bottom tap, the, the four flute, you know, flat tap or whatever they call it. Um, it's not long enough to go down that hole. So your, your shallow holes or the Gen 4 holes with this, you'll be able to, I mean, that thing will go right to the bottom. Um, on these holes, you know, there's a little bit of a space, but you can, you can really tell that it's all the way down there. So it's not, you know, don't stress yourself out. It's going to, a lot of this is going to be obvious when you start getting into it. Um, uh, I just wanted to kind of walk you through the procedure and, uh, how I like to do things and, uh, you know, try to help you guys out if I can. Hopefully that's the case. Um. You know, I'm sure there'll be somebody that'll say that they did it a different way or, you know, I did something wrong or, you know, something like that. That's fine, you know. Different people have different ways of doing things. But I will tell you this, I successfully got the insert into the, the engine block. So, um, didn't break anything. Everything's nice and clean. So, you know, you can take that for what it is. But anyway, um, you know, if you guys want to get these inserts, again, it's... Uh, Hun solution. I'll put that. I'll put a link down in the uh, description. And like I said, I'm not affiliated with them. You know, they don't even know I'm making this video or anything. I just want to try to help you guys out if you have this issue. Um, you know, a lot of us we don't have, you know, that kind of budget where we can just, you know, take an engine and drop it off at a machine shop and have them do thousands of dollars worth of work. Some of us have kids and, you know, stuff like that. And, and sometimes you just gotta, you know, try to learn how to do stuff yourself. Or maybe you're like me and you do a lot of mechanic work and you just, you know, just wanted to kind of see the procedure. And this may be something that's really easy for most of you. So, um, depending on where you're at, you know, it's just, you know, I'm just trying to help you guys out. Basically, it's what, what a guy's trying to say. So, um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. hope it was helpful to you. You know, I'm, I'm always trying to put out, you know, tech videos and how-tos and, and all that kind of stuff. So... If you guys want more of that, especially for LS, uh, Trailblazer SS, Saab 97X, and of course the other GMT 360 vehicles, you know, a lot of them have V8s in them, and uh, every once in a while I might even work on a 4.2, you know, uh, got a lot of got a lot of experience with 4.2s, but I don't really have a lot of videos on them, so, um, anyway, subscribe if you want to, if you don't, that's fine, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs, thumbs down if you don't, you know, it is what it is, but, uh, Appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you later.